Hey, Lizards, Gizmo here. I wanted to share some of the cigars we'll be smoking in June and July, so you can smoke along with us if you'd like. For Cubans, we've got Partagas Series P number two, Vegas Robinho Unicos, San Cristobal de la Habana La Punta, and Por Laranaga Petite Corona. And for New Worlds, we've got Aging Room Quattro in Robusto, Oliva V in Churchill, and Davidoff Millennium in Pyramid. We also have a two-part deep dive on Artisan Tequila coming up over the next several weeks, with much, much more to come. Have a suggestion? Email us, loungelizardspod at gmail.com. That's loungelizards, P-O-D, at gmail.com. And now, let's get into the episode. Welcome to the Lounge Lizards Podcast. It's so good to have you here. It's a leisure and lifestyle podcast founded on our love of premium cigars, as well as whiskey, travel, food, work, and whatever else we feel like getting into. My name is Gizmo, and tonight I'm joined by Rooster, Pooba, Senator, Grinder, and Bam Bam. And our plan is to smoke a cigar, drink some tequila, talk about life, and of course, have some laughs. So take this as your 34th official invitation to join us and become a card-carrying lounge lizard. Plan to meet us here once a week. We're going to smoke a Cupid cigar tonight, share our thoughts on it, and give you our formal lizard rating. We again welcome chef partner Ricky Camacho from the Añejo Restaurant Group for part two of our tequila deep dive. We discuss our experiences in the restaurant industry, and we detail this Habanos Marca's long history, all among a variety of other things for the next hour. So sit back, get your favorite drink, light up a cigar, and enjoy as we pair two artisan tequilas with the Por Laranaga Petite Corona. A Petite Corona from Habanos on the pod tonight, boys. The oldest of the Habanos Marcus tonight. And uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. But let's uh, let's cut this thing. Should we get on the cold draw? My favorite size. Yeah. Por La Ranga. Something like that. These are delicious little cigars. Wow. The cold draw is really flavorful. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's good. I'm not getting a ton. My draw is pretty tight. I'll be honest. My draw is tight too, but I'm getting uh, I'm getting some good I don't flavors know. here. Mine's wide open. Getting mine is awesome. A little open. sweetness on mine. Mine's it tastes open. like a humidor. It does cedar. I get like cedar, cedar and some ancho chili. If you guys ever get your hands on some dried ancho chilies, uh, they're kind of pruny, plummy. You get that here for sure. Yeah, wow, that's food. a hell of a he's, call out. He's Quite not wrong. Notes. Yeah. Quite the he's refined call well, out. The voice you're hearing uh, out there is our guest Lizard. Uh, two weeks ago, he was here. We did a deep dive on tequila. He is back to uh, join us, smoking a great cigar tonight, and we are going to talk a little bit more about tequila. Welcome, uh, Ricky. Ricky, thanks for having me again. Chef and partner at Añejo Restaurants in New York and Philadelphia. So, thanks so much for joining us again, man. No, it's my pleasure being back. Uh, just. W- Happy to continue what we started a couple weeks back, and uh, hopefully there's people out there that want to hear some more. I'll tell you, unlike episode one uh, that we did with you a couple weeks ago, the tequilas you brought tonight I'm very excited about because I've had both of them. I know that all of us in the room, I think, have had both of them, so yep. I can't wait to dive in. So, all right, boys, let's Light, light this thing. The poor Laranaga, I can't say that damn name, Petite Corona, a 42 ring gauge by five and an eighth stick. Just for the record, Giz, you're saying for the butt cheek <laughs> with your improper <laughs> Spanish pronunciation. What? Oh, there. perfect. That's nice. That's exactly what that's, I need. That's pretty standard for Giz, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to have that in my head when I have to record the intro for this thing. The panic. Pol la ranga. Pol la ranga. Pol la ranga. Just say it the same way, Giz. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I do love these little sticks. I haven't had one in a while. I think they're very flavorful. Retro Hill is great. Yes, it is. Tastes Cuban. I got to say, I love doing this because for me, this is revisiting this cigar. I've had yes. this once, and it was from Rooster. And I, I liked it, but I didn't love it. But on the light this second time, maybe the second time is going to be the charm. Yeah, I'm liking I, what, I, what I get out of this. You know, the, the difference might be that this is... From a 50 cab and yep. the other one we I had bought like maybe five loose sticks so that has sometimes a lot to do with it these are cigars that are like sitting and marinating in a 50 cab box so i mean to your point i mean obviously we sing the praises of 50 cabs and when you pass these around the aroma just off the cigar just the wrapper even before i had cut it it was so fragrant it's awesome yeah right off the light i'm getting a lot of 
a potpourri of dry fruit and floral. It's fantastic. It's spice. With some, get, with some saltiness I'm there too. Some spice, yeah. I get the saltiness. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. I even got that on the cold draw. My did, lips yes. feel like I'm at the beach. Yes. Yeah. Little salt and nutmeg for me. Yeah. Very good. I'm getting a little caramel. Yeah. Mm. Salt, I would say. This um, is a full. Bo- this is a full yeah, flavor. For such a little stick to full, your point grinder. Full it's like flavor. Totally. Concentrated flavors oh in gosh. a petite Corona. Very, very smooth. Yeah. The, the, I get some black pepper on the finish. Rooster, how much are these? Um, I don't know. They're, they're not that bad. What, not, eight bucks, ten cheap. bucks. Yeah, about like ten bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little less actually. Yeah. I've never had a poor alaranga. No. Ever. No. Good. Way. Good job there, Bam. Oh, thank you. <laughs> B- Bam's like, that's the first time I've heard that on the podcast. <laughs> oh, it took 32 episodes. I disavow all of you except for Ricky. <laughs> so I got to say, um, you know, uh, th- this cigar, uh, this marca has quite a bit of history about it. Um, not only was it registered in 1834, founded in 1834, it is the oldest Habanos marca, which mm. is incredible because it's not one that's it's certainly not one of their global brands it's not even one of their value it's a portfolio brand it's buried on the the it's a tertiary brand for them i'm sorry but hearing this first of all i didn't know that yep second of all puba or i in our retirement need to run marketing for this brand i agree sure, sure. that's a that's a deal i mean my goodness yeah they, what, what a story that's gone untold it's, it's crazy. gone it's yeah it's gone untold I don't know how many Vitolas they have in there. I, th- I think only I was just th- about to say three. three, three Galanis, uh, Monte Carlo, and this. The Galanis is actually... Is that a regional? It's no, a, it's not a regional. Maybe it's a limited production. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. think they put... It doesn't have out. an extra band on it. Galana, but, well, there's four cigars. Yeah. One's uh, a Habanas exclusive, which is called the Picadoras. Picadoras, yes. And then the Monte Carlo, the Petit Corona, and the Galanis. So I think you're correct. I think there's three in regular production. But this I mean is, that even that I mean it's just a sin. This that, is wowing me right now. It's actually. amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I, this is number one. This is my favorite size of cigar. Mm-hmm. Number two, the taste of this salt. We were, someone mentioned the salt, like the sea. We, the yeah. sea salt is it's it's keeps on hitting me it's on the right lips. there. You yeah. know, it's like the caramel and the salt That's goes fantastic. perfectly together. That it is goes. a perfect perfect combination that right? I'm getting here. Absolutely. It could yeah. also be the sweat of the roller, which you guys. <laughs> 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 well, oh, sweat is salty. <laughs> <laughs> So um, some other really interesting things about this marca and, and this brand. Um, what's interesting is in 1925, I guess there were some major labor problems, labor shortages, whatever. This was the first brand in the world. Obviously, this is pre-revolution. So we're not talking about a communist, you know, uh, a nationalism of all uh, uh, corporations. Port Aranaga was the first factory to machine make cigars in 1925 in the world. So they were a pretty, you know, an innovator in that space. Obviously, we don't celebrate machine-made cigars. We celebrate handmade cigars. But it still is a pretty large innovation in... in so are these still machine-made? No, they are all, okay. they're all handmade now. Actually, Habanos doesn't have any machine-made uh, cigars except uh, Puritos, Joyitas, like little... Okay. You know, the smaller cigars are still machine-made. But yeah. these cigars... I got some dirty looks when I asked that, but that's okay. Well, I just looked at you that way because I'm sitting there <laughs> saying, do you think, cigar. you think Rooster would ever buy a machine-made? <laughs> God forbid. I'm asking, <laughs> What's I'm wrong asking with you, wouldn't man? come in a 50 cap. <laughs> I ask in a, on behalf of the listener. Okay. The, so the, the, re- the Retro Hero is so spicy. It's, 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 it's very so good. It's really nice. It's delicious. It's very this good. is a great cigar. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to say too was at the time of nas- uh, nationalizing in 1960 during the you know the uh, the revolution, this was the sixth largest marker that they had, alongside you know Upman and, and others. This was the sixth largest, and certainly has fallen. I would maybe argue by the wayside as far as Habanos goes because. It's it's a fairly ignored marca, except from people who do deep yeah. dive. But you know, in our group, I do see them. I do see them come up and go down. It's not like they sit. Like, you know. There, there, there's fans. They're fans of the cigar, but yeah, it's not. It's not. Something that's so popular. I wonder how how popular certain, marcas are in Cuba. Like what? What's the average Cuban smoking? Farm I, rolls. I think they're smoking farm rolls or stuff they're rolling themselves. Nothing from the Habanos factory. I would think stuff that, out of the back of the factory. Yeah, I would think they're not able to go and buy it. 
you know, which is a tragedy in and of itself. But. I mean, think about what the average Cuban worker's income is and how much a box of these cigars are. It's like, forget about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they always say the average roller makes a dollar a day. Oh, wow. Cuba. Wow. Yeah. And then true? people wonder why when the prices true? go up. Yeah. Wow. People wonder why there's a labor shortage, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's terrible. But he probably gets to smoke some sticks that he's rolling. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah I mean, they smoke a lot of cigars. They just so get actually, different he's ways. probably making like 50 bucks a day. <laughs> <laughs> Rooster's like, sign me up. <laughs> Oh, Lordy. But yeah, so this is, uh, I, I found that really interesting when I was doing a little research on the Marca, that it, it had such a history to it, because they certainly don't market that, they don't celebrate that, certainly the way that I think they should, and with the way that this cigar is tasting right now, I mean, this is really, really a dynamic cigar. And I, I wonder why you talked about the Picadores before, right? That's got a red label on it, mm-hmm. but... This one, the Galanis and the Monte Carlo, they all have the same label. I think golden, the red one gold, is the Habanos golden uh, white. Specialist, or the Habanos Special for yeah. Habanos stores. A lot so. of people like the Picadores as yeah. well. I haven't sought had after. Yeah. Mister, what's the age on this? This is a uh, LGR twenty nineteen. So three years. Yeah, not a lot of age. I I would I, 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 that's amazing to me. Wow. Yeah. I wish we could go back to two weeks ago and smoke and, st- and smoke this one. Smoke this instead of this on <laughs> crystal ball. Yeah, yeah. This is night and but day. But I'm sure you guys might feel that way about some of the tequilas I brought today. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to say I, I'm actually really glad that we are doing this cigar with the tequilas that we are, and I say that because obviously, you know, what was so impressive to us when we met Ricky and in bringing him on was his knowledge and exposing us to all of these. Um, you know, lesser known brands that produce an outstanding product. And this is a perfect example of a brand that's obviously not nearly as well known as the big major Cuban brands. Um, And even for me, I've never bought a box of anything they make. This is only the second one of their cigars I've ever smoked. And the first one was good, but not great. This is off to a really great start and is already making me interested in buying some of these. Agreed. And you can really get these at a good price point. I mean, I say that because I would see these pop up at a very reasonable price, and i say, oh, should I, shouldn't I? And it, it didn't knock my socks off enough the first time, but this is Changing this is your special. tune. Yeah. You could always ask me, Senator. <laughs> <laughs> these will be on sale after the pot. At a 20, discount. 20, 20 bucks a stick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, we have Ricky here, so... We know what we have to do, which is drink well, some tequila. Yeah, can we just dive into this tequila yeah, let's because get into it. I, it's staring at me and <laughs> a cigar like this needs absolutely a so deserving Ricky, pairing. What's up first? Tell us about it. All right, guys. So first up, we got the Fortaleza Añejo. This is a lowland tequila, meaning it comes from the Valley of Tequila in Jalisco. This is cooked in brick ovens. This is uh, extracted using a tojona, which is a large stone wheel that's rolled over the cooked agave. And uh, as far as fermentation, wooden fermentation tanks, open air fermentation, meaning there's wild yeast that goes in there. Uh, and for aging, they age this in American white oak, ex bourbon barrels, and distilled near proof. But uh, they do have a still strength on the market too. That's a little hotter, but a little brighter on the agave. This um, is delicious. Yeah. These I, guys, oh my God. Yeah. I think it's safe to say that most of us in this room love this tequila. Yeah. I happen to really love this. The this nose is really is interesting. Fantastic. The flavor is very interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. top to bottom, it is yeah. just a superb yeah. And I spirit. haven't, honestly, I haven't had this neat until tonight. Really? Wow. So it, the first yeah. time I had how it, Ricky gave I it to me neat. I don't know how you let that happen. <laughs> You're not doing your job. <laughs> but at the club, I had it with just a chip of ice. It really was so delicious. I happen to like it better than a Don Julio. But neat now, it's a different experience. Very it's balanced. still very enjoyable. So, Grinder, if you, there, there's saltiness here and minerality that really just pair well with this. Cigar. I was just going to say, a lot of minerality. It kind of tastes like hard water. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm serious. It's like I'm getting like a mineral water. Yeah. So, uh, you, for me, I sort of, I, I, I refer to that as, as soul, right? Yeah. And that comes from this process that, you know, Two weeks ago, we had tequilas, and neither of those tequilas were made with a tohona. Those agaves were processed using a screw mill. Mm. So it's more of a shredding process, and 
and metallic in that sense. But here you're using that to hold and it's really introducing a lot of minerality and saltiness and the pairing is phenomenal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, oh this my is God. working really well. Yeah, I mean, so I, well complimented. I, I also have to say, I mean, Ricky's poured for us also the Reposado before, and this is obviously the Anejo. Mm -hmm. We're talking about lesser known brands that really deserve a spotlight. And I think Fortaleza, because the Reposado is fantastic. I like that. I can actually find. I have purchased some. I don't have the Anejo yet. I need to find this. This brand is deserving of it's a lot of credit. Fantastic. Fantastic. And How it's, much, it's yeah. nothing to do with the restaurant. La Fortaleza, right? No, no, absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> For the listener, uh, I, I've never been, but just from every human being I know that it's has Puma's, been there, it's basically Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> of like, Mexican restaurants. I, I, I like to call it the Clase Azul. It's, it's, like, it, it's like walking into a cartoon strip. Puma's, Puma's been there. The videos. Oh, well, I've been there many times, um, but everything doesn't have to be in life to me be that serious so when you go there sure. it's really about just having fun and and they have a mariachi band and <laughs> and if you, you get an enchilada and you drink some tequila and you have a well, good time tell us about the guacamole how they serve guacamole in a bus <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> yeah it's like a it's little like ceramic a bus oh it's like a car <laughs> it doesn't even Why? taste like fresh guacamole it's like out of a can no Shopping. no I it's like that. it doesn't yeah. taste fresh it doesn't taste well like i mean nothing's particularly out of a bus good. I, it's it's <laughs> i don't know it, well you've been there many times it's yeah. just it's just a fun mexican place it's yeah. not serious it's not it's good for kids rooster used yeah. to own a mexican restaurant so i think he's got, oh, a, he's got a discerning mexican cuisine uh, oh yeah taste. oh yeah the, the, the salad out of the bag and all that <laughs> stuff <laughs> <laughs> like fucking Subway. You know, it's like a mass producing t fucking tacos, t taco maker. <laughs> Glad you remembered the name. That was that was strictly I'm for commercial purposes. That was that was for commercial purposes. I only. take it you never ate there. No, I'm kidding. No. I, I, dude, I eat Taco Bell yeah, for Christ's sake. This was I mean, much I love this was Mexican before food. Taco Bell. It was much better. If I say so. <laughs> <laughs> Benny's burritos in the city. I eat that. I used to eat that yeah. stuff. I can't get over the guacamole is served in a bus. <laughs> there's, there's. If you go there, there's so many more things that you wouldn't be able to yeah, get up. Like, I think quote, they unquote, serve get churros over. in a little food cart or something. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, put yeah. That on the table. Not everything. <laughs> Presentation. It's just, yeah. it's just a lot of show and it's just for lunacy it's purposes it's, yeah people yeah. very dancing. colorful place yeah the decor is outrageous very colorful. i mean i've only seen photos oh yeah every inch of every yes. wall in that restaurant has stuff on it it looks oh, like yeah. mexican graffiti everywhere yeah it's yeah, yeah. it's fun it's beautiful it's really cool it's yeah. but uh, i don't know yeah. well I, I like going there it's yeah. fun i mean i it, it's not like i'm dining there all the time you get a couple tacos push them in it costs like the bill is like Push him, in. push him in. <laughs> <laughs> you leave? Shove him down. Yeah, you shove down some tacos. I mean, it's like, it's like it's like when you leave though. Like if you go with like four people, the the, the bill like with the liquor it's is like eighty like, bucks. It's, it's like one hundred twenty seven dollars. It's not even a lot of money. That like, won't it sounds like a great restaurant. restaurant. I always love force feeding myself. <laughs> restaurants. It sounds great. <laughs> look at great look, man. Look at the ash on Ricky's. Different. Uh, different love wow. or, or i think Good. everybody's got a i mean it's it's really holding it is holding yeah well constructed cigar yeah the cigar is phenomenal and honestly very very tasty the minerality is amplifying i think that's great in my in my in my situation so here. for guys who smoke these often i know rooster is certainly one of them how do these or, or how do these change with age like what is the expectation if i buy a 50 cab i smoke smoke them fairly slowly like do you the ones you've had with age, are they? No, I haven't really had any with like a lot of age on them. Okay, so this is the tricks, oldest so that you've this, had. Yeah, pretty much. That's okay. good. That's very, that's very a good encouraging. Sign. Yeah. yeah, that's a good sign. Because mm -hmm. I've always heard good things about this cigar. Yeah, and the Galanis as well. Yeah, the Galanis is a robusto size, but I think this has more concentrated flavors. So Me Mexican restaurants aside, though, this um, tequila, can you find it? Easily, absolutely. Uh, Fortaleza is getting to a point where you could now find it as a specialty tequila in your local brick and mortars. Um, just a quick side note, you know, at the clubhouse, I always see Bam Bam. He's sort of when he's enjoying a cigar, he stares at it, 
He does the shake. And he just he does the shake with the hands. <laughs> he praises God. He and thanks. You know, he offers thanks. A part of me wants to know what the fuck is he saying in his head because he doesn't speak. Well, that is a right? common question and, that we all have. Yes. And, and he nods his head. You know what it is. You know. You know what I, he's I thinking. He's, well, he's thinking that guacamole I'm, in that bus I'm, I'm, in a can. <laughs> that's what I want right now. No, I'm saying this because this pairing has me doing that. To me. Yeah, you, I noticed you were doing you that. You know, it's just like holy you got the bam, bam. shit. You know, if I, I may, mean, if I may. So I, I really do do get lost in the in the flavor and the in the notes of the of the cigar. I just when I capture those notes, it's a, it's special to me. You don't get that in every cigar. Absolutely and, right. Yeah. And, when you, and when you capture a note that's delicious and unique, it just, just it's just a moment in with you and your cigar. The and key, that's it. The key word is you get lost. Yeah, in a puff of smoke, and it's just it's so relaxing and it's delicious. Well, there, you know, to me, smoking a great cigar, uh, you know, and we've all had these moments. There, there's nothing better, and, and with a great spirit like yeah. this, that when when something clicks like that, it's it's like it's heavenly. And honestly, this pairing is a great. It's, it's really good. It's clicking on all notes. Yeah, it's fantastic. Now I will say, unintended, and it's really wonderful. I will say to to Fortaleza's credit, every cigar I've had with this tequila that yeah. that Ricky's been so generous it to works. share with us. It works. I mean, it hits. Now we're smoking, you know, collectively, especially outside of the pod when we're kind of in our regular rotation or you know what we normally smoke. We're smoking cigars that have quite a quite a bit of flavor. They're more full, call them stronger, whatever word you want to use. Most of the time, that especially when we're having tequila like this with it, and it really really matches well, mm. you know, with all of them. You know, the P two, the D four, the uh, Upman two. You know, just cigars that I've certainly been smoking. I mean, it's it's and the Padrones. It works great. But even the Ras with the Ras too. Yeah, yes. the Ras with the Don Julio was fantastic. Yeah, when yeah. I, yeah. I would say this. I just think any of the spirits that we drink that have not a crazy amount of flavor to them or like a, a really aggressive finish that have like either a drier finish or, or just something that almost cleanses your palate, it accentuates the cigar. That's true. Right? Like we've talked about like you have Paul Roger or some other like medium to dry champagne, each puff of smoke is that much richer and more accentuated as you're cleansing your palate all the way through. And I think tequila is a spirit that very much fits that bill. And I say that because if you have an extremely flavorful bourbon, I wouldn't say that that accentuates the flavor that you're getting out of the cigar. In some cases, it can actually dominate the flavor yeah, that you're getting out of the cigar. That's, that's the perfect word, yep. dominate. Yep. And I think with tequila... It, 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 it's always, it's being that great supporting actor or actress where it's just saying, let the cigar be the show, and it's just helping that along. I, I love a tequila Agreed. pairing. I think totally it's agree. more so with Cuban cigars because tequila, you get like sometimes like floral notes that kind of complement yeah. the notes out of a Cuban cigar. That's true. And, and the salt. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this and it's somewhat, this Fortaleza has somewhat of a drier finish maybe. <laughs> It reminds me of the same type of characteristics of Green Spot, although much different. I'm just talking mechanically. Green Spot Irish whiskey. Um, I drank a bottle uh, this week. This morning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> this week in air quotes. <laughs> Was it in the shower or not in the shower? <laughs> um, and it's, it's, you know, I have to tell you, it's one of my new really favorite things because of some of what um, Senator's talking about. Like it delivers this, it has just a little bit drier of a finish for me. Yeah. Isn't it more like scotch-like, that particular... Uh, no, it's no, like it's no, different. it's Irish it's whiskey. We did it on the pot. We did. we did it on the pot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Irish whiskey, but it's it's one of the really the it, it, it's it, it's one of the better ones I've ever had. Hmm. Um, I bought a bottle after the pot. I mean, yeah, it's I like in it. my rotation now. It's, so it's, good. It's, it's really good. Yep. So that drier finish with the minerality present that you're talking about, that is something you'll see often in artisanal lowland tequilas. Highland tequilas tend to contain more vanilla, some of the more sweeter sort of caramel notes. Uh, and when we get to the next tequila, you'll see some of that. But you'll see that here a lot, especially with Fortaleza, because it is a lowland. Um, you'll find that saltiness and that minerality that pairs well with lighter Cubans. Like, 
Yeah, because the finish is there; it lingers, but it's mm-hmm. dry. Yep, yep, yep. And and it and and I think to Senator's point, it 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 plays well with 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 kind of showcasing the tobacco, um, in a really in a really nice way. So, this is even good for us to know because you know if I'm trying to pair, if I'm in a store buying tequila and I want to pair that with some Cuban cigars, I'm going to look for lowland tequilas. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they yeah. pair fantastically. That flavor profile you described is exactly what I would look for. And maybe if I'm going to smoke a New World, a Padron, a Davidoff, something, and I did want tequila with that, then I'd probably look for a Highland. Yep. What, what are you selling? Are you selling a lot of this in the restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I would say on, on a Nipor, we're selling Fortaleza quite a bit. Yeah. Hey, is agave only found in Mexico? It is not. But to be tequila, it has to come from one of the five states in Mexico. That but is, that's uh, interesting. Is tequila so only made in Mexico or not? Can it's I, only made in Mexico. The, recently, I'd say in, I, in the last five years, I've probably seen a couple agave distillates uh, out of California or something like that. But, you know, it's kind they of can't, like... They, they cannot call they it tequila. They can't call it tequila. So what, are the, what do they call it's it? It's agave spirit or agave distillate or... Okay. Um, so just like champagne has to be exactly. champagne because it's or, from France. Or cognac has to be from cognac, yeah. France. Yeah, right. Same same thing. Right. Denomination of origin. I will say, so I, you know, two weeks ago when we did our first episode of the, the Tequila Dive with Ricky, I found those to be kind of more an out, uh, of an outlier for me from a flavor standpoint. Like different, unique. Um, you know, the second one we had, I forget what that was. It was more vanilla and sweet. The Casa Noble. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the first one was just like this flavor bomb of uniqueness, like things that I've never really tasted in a spirit. Whereas this is is the most, uh, it's the closest to what I'm used to drinking, what I'm used to reaching for. And not just because I've been having it with Ricky and you guys at the clubhouse, but it's closer to what I'm used to in a spirit that I'm pairing with a cigar. Yeah, I, I 100% agree, Giz. And I think, forget that it, it's similar to things I've been drinking. It, it's just, it, it's my wheelhouse. Like th- this That's is, a great way to put th- it. These are the flavor notes that I look for in a spirit when I'm pairing it with a cigar. Um, and so this more so than most tequilas, I would pick up and would be part of my daily rotation. Absolutely. How much is this bottle? The Añejo is about 67 to 76. That is so yeah. damn reasonable yeah. For, yeah. for the flavor that you get out of this. What's the cost of the Don Julio that we buy? Uh, probably about 55. Okay. Yeah, 55. It's a step up, but honestly, I think it's a step up in quality as well. I probably. agree. No doubt. Right? About for 12 yeah, more percent. bucks, I yeah. think this and, is and I think that's 100% actually, worth it. I think that's worth no, and, explaining and, a little bit further in the sense that we obviously, before you know meeting Ricky, <laughs> we were really, Don Julio fans. We were huge, and, and I'm still a Don, Don Julio Julio's fan. Still it's good. never going to yeah, change it's, that. It's yeah. never going to change that. Right. But what I'm saying is that's that's what we knew, and that was kind of the gold standard, certainly for Puba and I. I mean, that was like our daily driver as far as um, tequila went. And it wasn't until meeting Ricky that now, I mean, I have bottles, plural, of Fortaleza in my house that have made my daily rotation that I reach for and I can see and appreciate the difference in the artisanal way that some of these tequilas are made. Um, So for me, it's just been very educational and not just, oh, that's interesting to try, but no, wow, that's really good. And I I will slot that in regularly when I'm seeking to reach for a bottle of tequila. Yep, absolutely. There's a time and place for everything. And a Don Julio works. Look, you're going to a party with a ton of people. You want to take a one and a half liter bottle of Don Julio for whatever, 70 bucks, 60 something bucks. It works. You know, you don't know how people are going to drink it. You don't know what they're right. going to do. And, and it'll be less painful. Look, if I bring this bottle to a party and everybody starts pouring ice and soda into it, I'll probably lose my shit. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's a great. You know, it's, 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 a, it should be respected. By, by the it's way, a great we, analogy we with his, cigars. We need his wholesale price. Yeah. Hell yeah. $70 for a handle of Don <laughs> Julio. Go. Cheapest we found is 100 We just found our new dealer. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, in the, um, in the culinary world how how frequent do you find other cigar smokers not frequently Frequently, no no they they tend to be a little older than me Um, i'm 40 years old but they tend to be a little older uh a little bit more scarred (laughs) in life experiences 
Uh, no, my uh, my good friend, he's actually a martial artist and he owns a couple schools. Uh, that was my my sort of my first cigar connection outside of being a kid and seeing my uncle smoke it. You know, they would say, oh, we're going to go running around the reservoir. And my aunt would be like, OK, because you guys need to lose weight. Go for it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we probably did half a spin or, you know, half a lap around the reservoir and then sat down and they would start smoking sticks. And my cousin <laughs> and I would go off to play. That's a great post-workout routine. Yeah, Love it. Was, it. It was just an excuse to go out and, and, and Amen. smoke. Amen. You know? It's a ruse. And, you, know, um, you know, nowadays I tell my wife I'm going to the lounge and she's like, all right, have fun. You know, she, she loves what cigars have done for me. It's given me a social life. Prior to this, it was all work and no play. And that, I, that was it. That's a great I find story. That, you, know what's great fu- story. you know what's interesting? And, and I want to ask you about this, Ricky, because I, I know some folks in the that are they're chefs in the culinary space and the one thing that I find that no matter how successful these folks are, the the most scarce resource they have is time. You know, the culinary space is an all-consuming vocation. And I, I use that word very specifically, not profession, vocation, because I think people that get passionate about food and, and selling food and preparing food for people, it's like your calling. Mm-hmm. And to dive in as deep as you need to to succeed really requires a, a level of commitment that certainly I can't even fathom, you know? And, and so is it a matter of these folks just don't have that kind of free time that sitting around and smoking a couple of cigars a week would require? So prior to today where I'm able to sit here with you guys on the pod and smoke a stick, the way I made time for a stick at the time I was living in Harlem, right? My restaurants are located in Tribeca and house kitchen spent most, if not all of my time for the most part in Tribeca, because it was a newer property. Um, I would walk home a seven mile walk. Wow. I put down wow. two or nice. three sticks and I do that three times a week. Love it. So the reality is you make time for things you want to make time for in your life. Sure. Uh, yeah. And that was, you know, some, I would get home if I took the train or a taxi home, I'd get home and I'd, I'd be, you know, just I'd still be at 100 percent. I couldn't wind down. I couldn't go to sleep. I'd be up to four or five in the morning. You know, if I leave the restaurant at midnight and it takes me two and a half hours to walk home, I'm ready to go to sleep. I take a shower. I go to bed. I'm ready for the next day. It was so it was it was a way for me to wind down, to sort of meditate, to think back on what went on throughout the day, how I could do things better, what needs to be done, sort of plan my day, plan my week. Um, And, you know, it's Añejo has been in existence for 11 years. I can say that over the last maybe three years, I've been able to find a way to create time for myself. You know, prior to that, it was all, I was, I was that chef. I yeah, was, 24-7, I, right? I had no time for anything. I never went to any school functions. I never did any of these things for my, with my kids. Uh, but I would say over the last three years, you know, the great thing about expanding is you start putting people into place. Uh, and you train these people and, and you look for great people that could, you know, continue to represent you, the brand, the restaurant as a whole and you know do their thing and now it's more of an of an oversight and and guidance and and leadership role versus a sweating over a stove role Uh, yeah so you know it it, like like any career it grows and you know you just hopefully and i think like any entrepreneur you you know anybody who looks at you goes wow he's such an a success and i love when people use the word overnight success but they don't realize that to be in the position that you're in it took 11 years of really hard work and a lot of struggle and well, yeah, sacrifice I, to do it. Yeah, you I've know? been doing this for 22 years and there I started as a server. I started as a waiter. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, I thought I wanted to be an architect. I went to school for architecture. Don't anyway. become an architect. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. I highly, I tell you, please, run away. <laughs> I was, Says I was, the architect. I was in there. I was the in education there. is phenomenal, but the career is really tough. Yep. <laughs> I I, I actually, I I was a server. I was a bar back. I was a bartender. And I actually loved, I loved the job. I loved walking around all day. I was always exhausted. I was, you know, you are, it is consuming. You always had a purpose though, right? There was always, there was always something to do. And I, I'm one of those, I'm one of those persons that I need to, I need, I'm, I'm kinetic. I need to be doing shit. And being a server, I, I could, I could occupy my mind talking to people not talking to people or just not talk or not talking to people and just doing, you know, doing what I need to do, going through the motions. And it just, you, you get into this, this mode and you just go and go and go. 
And um, I loved it. I loved, I loved that. I, I got to say, what I admire about the restaurant business, and I have dreams, the beauty of that is you make something delicious and you serve that and you get instant gratification. Someone tells you how yep. good it is. I love that. The, the, there's, there's the really, other there's there's really the other something side too, to that. Though. There's the other side mm. where, you know, you make something delicious and it may not sell. Mm. Or you yeah. make something delicious and it comes back. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Oh, that's Bam, Bam does make so. a great bolognese. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I knew it was coming. I, I actually was not expecting that to be coming in. For fuck's sake. He was too relaxed. You were too relaxed. I was. You were too relaxed. I don't know what to say. All right, let's so talk just about fastball. Let's talk about the cigar. <laughs> yeah, so we're halfway through, boys, in the Paul Guaranaga. Petit Corona. Yeah. I am really delicious. enjoying this cigar. It's delicious. I, it's really I, I think I'm halfway you know, through. Rooster, I think I'm having a bad draw on this. Can I get a second one? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Rooster. Take, take guesses. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll Rooster, it. I need it's another one. Uh, I want you got it. Everybody this, gets this a second a, one. Seconds? Is, nice. This is burning slow, though. Well, this is poor. not, this is not, for me, I'm, I'm, Am I? I'm not. A, I'm not halfway through. You're about halfway. You're about halfway. Is that you're halfway? halfway through. Yeah, you're yeah. about halfway. Yeah, I would say two thirds. I think. Um, I think it's picked up. Yeah, the double. tequila. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's picked up for me for sure. I, I'm really really enjoying this. I am too. Yeah. I I can't wait to try the second tequila. I mean, this is great. I think that's the operative word. It's picked up. Absolutely. The second half of this, the flavor is really mm -hmm. robust. Yeah, it's right there. Amazing how much out of this little beautiful segue. Little stick. Beautiful segue into the second tequila. Yeah, so we, yeah, we got to do let's it. Let's do it. Let's stick. Ricky, what do we have here? Give, talk about it. All right, guys. Next up, we have the Tapatillo Excelencia. This tequila is made by one of my favorite master distillers in Carlos Camarena. Beautiful color. Is that a region in uh, Mexico? Tapatillo? Tapatillo is actually the name of the... Um, I want to say it's the name the, of what's the... What's the region that mm. rhymes with... Uh, sounds similar. Jalisco? No. <laughs> that doesn't sound similar. No. Um, <laughs> Tomatillo? Tomatillo? <laughs> I'm not talking about vegetables. If Rooster says si. so himself. Si. So a fun fact about the previous tequila we drank, uh, it's made by Guillermo Salza. He is the three times removed grandson of Salza, the tequila oh that God, we yeah. all oh, okay. know as the sort of poor favorite. Um, and basically, he want he saw this empty distillery on his land that his grandpa used to use way back in the day, or his great 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 grandpa. Sorry, two times removed. Uh, he wanted to bring it back to life, and he did so by creating Fortaleza. So that's uh, and you know what the reality is in this industry. That's how a lot of this tequila is made because it's such a labor of love kind of thing. You know, it's not a, a quick money make or anything like that. You really need that passion and that that history to make it happen. Uh, this next guy, Carlos Camarena from Tapatillo. So he makes a few different tequilas. He makes Tequila Ocho, he makes El Tesoro, and he makes Tapatillo um, out of La Teña Distillery. Now, this distillery is positioned on a place in Mexico where the soils are so rich in iron that they're red and the water tastes of blood. That's unbelievable. Uh, That's it's, so cool. It's, it is insane. Very cool. Uh, so... Maybe if we do this again, I'll bring the El Tesoro next time around. Uh, but he basically made a tequila for everyone. So the, the tequila ocho is sort of like a, uh, it's three times distilled. It, it has a smooth finish. And then he has the El Tesoro, which is artisanal and every, they're all artisanal, but he follows all of the old school methods. Uh, and then we have Tapatio, which is somewhat in the center. So, you know, he has an engineering background. So he sort of, you know, used that to create his distillery and he has all these different methods of, of fermentation, of processing or grinding the agave, everything from a, a screw mill to a steel roller to a tohona. And in the case of Tapatio, he uses both. Mm. Uh, so he's getting maximum extraction. Now, this tequila is the only extra añejo uh, that we've tasted so far, uh, both here and in the clubhouse. Um, it is four, It spends four years in oak, and then it's rested in glass for an additional year. So... Like the Fuente Seca, he's letting it sit in the glass just to kind of marinate and come together uh, uh, and be itself. I'll tell you, I get a lot of caramel in this one. Yeah, lots. The, lots. the yeah. Lots note, of, by the way, I, the only note that I can really explicitly call out on the nose is cherry. When I the, smell this, it's yeah. like cherry. Yeah, yeah, I get I get caramel. 
I, I get, get cherry, I get, I get caramel, caramel in the front, and I get caramel in the finish. So it's, now with the taste, it's all with that. It's, it's right? caramel. Senator, sure. Senator's with, with me that. there. I, yeah. I think, so I get the cherry on the nose like you're describing. That's gives, accurate. But then like Bam says on the finish, I get the caramel yeah. notes. It's are, really are you guys familiar nice. with Mexican cinnamon or canela? No. Yes. Right. I'll, I'll bring I'll bring a, a nice piece of bark of that just so you guys can I'll chew on it. And oh, that's, oh, that's oh, worth familiar. Right. Um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, this Son is just amazing, right? It's an extra añejo. This bottle retails for about one seventy. Wow. Um, Once again, very generous. Ricky, Thank you. Bring in the heat, <laughs> but but it drinks like something that should cost much more. And you know, you guys react to the price point, but to me, I'm like, that's a liter bottle, and it's fucking delicious. Yeah, it is for one hundred seventy dollars. It's, it's excellent. I don't this need is to really spend good. Three hundred, so four hundred bucks. Is to get that it typical done. for an extra añejo? Cost wise, I mean, no, extra añejos are typically a little bit more, especially when they're aged as long as this, right? Because mm. you could age for three years and still be an extra añejo. Um, so, so this is five, correct? All yes, in? five all in. Four in a barrel, yeah. one in the glass. In a barrel, one yeah. Unbelievable. So, so when, when you when you're in the glass, though, yeah, that's have, a good. Can, can you have you ever tasted something that was everything up until putting it in the glass? And before it goes in the glass, to taste that versus after it's been in the glass, is there actually a difference? Because as I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, what is actually happening in that bottle? A, a thousand percent. I mean, there there is a difference from opening the bottle and and waiting a few months. It, it's it's you know I I wouldn't say that the bottle's imparting any flavor, uh, but I just think the resting process allows it to yeah come together and 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 to so that's fascinating to me because because i i I like we all drink scotch scotch to me when we have an you know age statement on the bottle and it's it's in a bottle and it's not really changing from the day that it came out of the barrel right if you can have it a 12 year old scotch that was out of the barrel and ready for distribution in 2000 and then try that same bottle you know 10 12 years later whatever and it's going to taste pretty much the same. It's close, but I think if you're tasting it and analyzing it, you'll find differences. 100%. Okay. Hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, there's this, yeah. yeah. So I've yeah. seen I've seen that in bourbon reviews, people are crazy about bourbon, and the, I've seen it in bourbon reviews where they're like, "I opened this bottle a year ago, and I drank like a third of it," and then they revisit it and they're like, "It changed." So I've seen that like in YouTube videos randomly. So if something does happen, potentially maybe it opens up, maybe it just needs time to, there's some sort of chemical reaction, I think that some people believe takes place yeah, re- remember after the, you open the bottle. There is some evaporation that takes you know, place. Th- these are all transparent bottles. In the bourbon world, you do get some sort of brown tint on the bottles that helps prevent some sort of oxidation, right? Kind of like with beers, you get a clear bottle, you get that skunky of aroma and flavor profile now i'm not saying that happens with tequila but there is some sort of oxidation that happens once it's open that just kind of allows it to open up uh look you ask anyone on my team what my favorite tequila is and they'll tell you it's tapatio excelencia but there's been bottles of tapatio excelencia that i've opened and poured and i said i gotta let that sit for a bit right because it's just it's either too hot or it's not it hasn't you know whatever you know maybe it could just be a different lot a lot of these bottles have the lot numbers printed on them so, you know, agave is very spontaneous in, 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 in its flavor sometimes. And no matter what you do, you may not change any part of the process. But, you know, it's, 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 it's a very uh, temperamental, if you will, uh, harvest. So, yeah, it, it could change from one lot to another. Some lots, especially in the tequila world, are very, you know, prized. Um, you know, there was a lot 42 in Fortaleza, if you guys ever pick up a bottle of Lot 42, don't open it. Uh, there's some rumors and you know speculation out there that that was perhaps an extra añejo that was accidentally bottled in an añejo. Uh, I haven't seen a Fortaleza extra añejo yet, so maybe, and this was years ago, so I'm not sure if that was just sort of folklore or what. But um, yeah, so you know, fine. And I also invite you guys you know, on every bottle. There's always a gnome. Right. That gnome is essentially the the number of the distillery. So, you know, two weeks ago when we had the uh, the Fuente Seca and I mentioned to Gizmo that Don Fulano was also made there. 
you know, if you find a gnome and you drink a tequila that you like from that gnome, look up the other tequilas that are made in that gnome, and you may like those as well. I have a question. Ricky, can I get a job with you? <laughs> <laughs> because I want to do this for a living. Well, I know. I have no idea what I'm talking about. This, this I don't know what I'm doing. You have to start as a dishwasher. This isn't no what problem. I do. This, is, this is sort of a byproduct. I'm an right? excellent dishwasher, Ricky. I, I'm, I'm the, yeah. You sound like my buddy with the karate school. <laughs> uh, I don't want to do what I'm doing. I want to do this. I want to smoke a cigar and have this beautiful caramel like tequila. First, you got to work at Poopa's, Poopa's News. News. <laughs> got to graduate from there. Yeah, you got to just finish up with the Cobra Kai thing. You're yeah. doing. <laughs> it's fucking Johnny Lawrence over here. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> what is that? You know, you like want to run a dojo. You're not ready. <laughs> You're not ready. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Also, I want to make a point. I don't think Ricky's making his. I don't. I don't think Ricky's making his living from smoking cigars and drinking tequila. No, that's true. Absolutely not. This is a byproduct. The knowledge is the knowledge is staggering. I have to say, very impressive. Ten, eleven, ten years ago, shit. Even seven years ago, I didn't know much. You know, it took us a while to find our stride as a concept, as a brand, and. And start saying no, because, you know, you imagine you open a Mexican restaurant, it's pretty popular. You open a second location, everybody and their mother's walking in there trying to get you to buy their tequila. And God forbid it's another celebrity tequila for them. It's a home run. Like, oh, if I could walk in there and say, hey, this is such and such tequila, you know, they're going to pick it up. But then we say no. And they're like, what the fuck you mean? No. So <laughs> you know? that brings so. me that brings me to my a question I was going to ask you. So. Let's say um, um, you know a listener out there has only had those, uh, let's call it uh, pretty mainstream tequilas or, or celebrity tequilas, commercial tequilas. Yeah, commercial sure. tequilas. Yeah. Let's say, on average, you know, searching around local brick and mortar, walking into a brick and mortar, if they were going to buy a bottle or two of tequila, pair it with a cigar, what should they be looking for? Because a lot of these I know that we can't find. That we we've tried four in the last two weeks. This one, uh, you know, two today and two two weeks ago. What what? Where would you direct them if if they were walking into a B and M to to purchase a tequila? So if you're gonna go the Cuban route, I would say Fortaleza is a way to go. Siete Leguas is an, another good pick. That was actually the original Patron formula before Patron bought them. Um, well, and then what, if was, what was that one? Siete Leguas. What about Don Fulano? So Don Fulano, I'll probably put that more in the New World category. If you're smoking New World sticks, you know, that that heavy age, uh, the heavy wood, it would pair better with that. Yeah, I mean, that um, drinks like a, like a whiskey. Is yeah, that right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think if you go that route with this, it would still be delicious, but I think the cigar would sort of get flushed out. So you're not recommending Hornitos? <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely. Unless you go to a party. Oh, oh, oh Poopa's eyes just went up. That was excuse a nice, me. nice hot me. shank to the <laughs> underbelly. <laughs> Sorry, Poopa. Okay, I get a phone call from Gizmo. He's in Florida. He goes, "What's a tequila that I can buy at a liquor store that I can mix up in a frozen margarita for the bride?" Heredero Blanco. Okay, yeah, Heredero Blanco. Yeah. Listen, he if, he didn't, if you're going can to I make a party, he didn't mention it, that one. If you're, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I because I never I, because her, I like Haradura actually. I like the Haradura yeah. and Yeho. I, I um, love Haradura. Um, if if you're going to a party with people you've never met and you'll probably never meet again, take the salsa. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's a, you know you you're, you're never going to see them again. You're going to put yeah. it in a blender. You're probably going to buy the margarita mix and not use fresh limes. Whatever. So, Ricky, I have a question uh, about um, Haradura. For me, so I, I, a lot of people love Herradura. I'm in the strange minority of people that doesn't love Herradura. And it's because of a particular note that I get that I just don't love. I almost equate it to like the Cohiba of tequila. Where like Cohiba has like those like, especially some of the younger Cohibas, like really grassy notes. Mm -hmm. And in Herradura, I get like a grassy vegetal It's almost minty. Note minty taste. for me. A little of I that. get mint, yeah. It's but unusual. For me, it's very vegetal. It, yeah. it, it's like it lawn clippings that like just came out of a lawnmower. Mm. And I really don't. All right, I'm glad I got. No, no, well, I don't. You got grinder excited. I don't agree with you, but I love the analogy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
and, and you're I wrong, say that, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say that because I, I've not just had the like simple Heraduras, but I, I've had they make an extra Nejo. Yeah, that's like an expensive bottle. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. a buddy of mine had brought it over. I actually sent you guys a photo once. I was on my deck with uh, a friend of mine drinking this, and even that, it was good. But it's just it's not that there was anything wrong with it. Just for my palate, that like vegetal note that I think is very prominent in that mm -hmm. I don't personally love very much. So I'm just wondering it, where is that made or what, what produces that unique characteristic in the same way I would say the Cohiba flavor profile is very unique, completely outside of most of the other Cuban markets. So I'm just curious. Yeah, I would say that has everything to do with the age at which they're plucking the agapes. Ah. Right, so, so they're younger. They're 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 somewhat younger. Uh, you know, the Supremas definitely, they're they're higher end offering. And Heradura, I would say this: the Her of all the Heraduras, the Repo is my favorite. Uh, I think it's a great you know party you know salsa replacement by far, um, and you know it's also something you can get a massive bottle of you know to satisfy many people. That's good to hear because I've that's the only one I haven't tried is the reposado that they make. Yeah. So I'm so, gonna so try for, that. Yeah, next. for me the repo offers a little bit of both worlds and, and it flushes out enough of that grassiness, but brings in enough oak where because sometimes even in the añejo the oak could taste sort of green if that makes sense. The wood could taste sort of sort of green. Um, so yeah, of, of it has everything to do with the age at which they're. Plucking those agaves. Okay, so it's not something just with my palate. That's a sign Absolutely of not. young no, that, agave that necessarily yeah. shouldn't taste yeah. like that. If it were matured more, yeah. it would lose. And, and that's more their of that. flavor profile. That's what they're going for. Okay. So yeah, you're you're not wrong. In, in I I just I have such. By a, the way, grinder, I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, okay. by the way, by the way, grinder, senator's always right. <laughs> I, I, I have I have such a I have such a a warm place in my heart for Herodora. I worked. As do I. I as worked. Do I. I worked with a, a, uh, for, almost a year or two straight. Year, a little over a year straight with a a, a berry distributor. I was flying down to Mexico all the time. I was going to Jalisco. You know the whole. You know, they have a lot of berries in that area. So I, you know, had to spend spend a lot of time. I was working with a lot of Mexicans, and these are farmers, right? They're they're growing. They're on the land. They're you know doing mm -hmm. what we're. They're people mm -hmm. of the land. And they're also very operational and, and stuff. But we, we would go out and we would the, they would they would say to the to, to the gringo, you know, have some Herradura Suprema, and that's what we would always drink. And, and and that but but that is their top of the line, you know, like they yeah, weren't yeah. they weren't giving you Herradura Blanco. Herradura Suprema is delicious. Like, yeah, but that's their that that's their yeah. That that's the that's the. Top I just of have the line, I have sure, so yeah. many fond memories of that, and it's yeah. just it, taste aside. For me, it no, was, no, but, yeah. but, but what you were drinking is not what I was talking about. Exactly, yeah. No, and it's oh. it's that experience that you witnessed that got me to fall in love with. I can't just say tequila, but agave distillates in general. When you go to Oaxaca, it's magnified because oh, God, yeah. you know mezcal is essentially Oaxacan's moonshine. So you're walking into their home and you're saying, yeah, yeah. you know, like, hey, can I taste your juice? And you know, for a lot of a lot of these brands, how it starts, they taste their juice, and they're like, okay, I want a Can, bottle. Uh, do you keep you, two weeks ago? You were talking about juice. We didn't address it, and we're talking about juice again. How? What is the the, the juice is before it's? No, the juice is just a liquid that ends okay. up in the bottle. Okay. I just you know, it's just some juice. I love that. I'm going to call it juice now. Yeah. Juice. They're, they're kind of juicing it from the agave, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. With, like with the grinding process. And look, in mezcal, they go even a hyper artisanal. They go as far as clubbing the shit out of the mezcal. Wow. We'll use a club wow. and beat wow. it. Yeah. You know, they're not using any mechanical I'm going to be on YouTube tonight even... watching people <laughs> club <laughs> you know, if, agave. If, if, if this were a video <laughs> podcast, it'd be awesome footage to show because it really is. You see people work that hard, yeah. you know, for something that when you come to the States, people treat it as a shot. And it's painful. Yeah. You know, it's painful to witness. So you want, I, I want this to happen. Like, I want you guys to be like, tequila's worthy of an amazing cigar. That's Tequila's cool. worthy of a neat pour without ice. Tequila's worthy of my dollars, you know? And, and, and I want people on this podcast listening to feel the same way because they should. It's a special well, spirit. That, that's what this has been, I mean, for us. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the main reason that we invited, you know, you to be here, not only because we enjoy your company and you're very knowledgeable on this, but because it's so eye-opening the the artisanal 
aspect of tequila that I, I had no idea yeah. exists. There's just so much unknown it's about it. It's so unknown. Yeah. And I, yeah. I wish that there were stories being told like this because there's so much marketing around vodka and there's so much marketing around bourbon and, 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 and other whiskeys. Like, I don't understand why it took such a deep dive for us. Well, because I think that I think, like I, I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. It's a confusing category. There's a lot of brands, and 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 how they're made is clearly different. The, whether it's the starting material in the agave, the age of the agave, or and, and also the process, the end to end process. How, it, it, Sometimes it's a, you know, depending on what it is, sometimes it's aged in a barrel, sometimes it's aged in a gut. There's so, there's variability in the process and also in the starting material and it's tough to parse through. And then when you, when you, which is why this is so helpful because when you go out there and you're trying to gauge, you can't really gauge it by price. Yeah. Price is you know, not a. So sometimes, yeah. sometimes, not all the time you can you can navigate a little bit by price now and i'm not saying a bottle of silver oak is is necessarily worth the money or a or a bottle of jordan is necessarily worth that price but but with wine sometimes when you get above a certain price point i'm not saying you can't lose but there's a baseline level of like of quality of quality yeah. where with tequila I feel like there's additives and things that are put into these quote unquote kind of kind of fashionable tequilas and fancy bottles that are released by celebrities that it's a little bit wild westish. Yes, it is, and yeah. and that's why I feel like it's a little bit harder to kind of navigate through. Maybe it, it can so, get gimmicky, but yeah, I would say the other thing is right. Think about the spirits that are traditionally paired with cigars. They're probably all aged right and I'm, I'm pretty scotch ignorant you know i rely on you guys for my scotch knowledge which i've been building since listening to the podcast uh but when it comes to tequila your first introduction and for many still their only is a blanco tequila you know or that gold shit <laughs> you know right. so it's you know th th there's no aging to mask a crappy flavor profile you know right. when you get you could drink a ton of bourbons that'll be passable because of the age, you know, the aging, the, the time spent in wood. But, you know, otherwise you're just drinking corn liquor or moonshine. And at that point, you know, that juice is shit before it hits wood. But with tequila, it's, it's you know, there's because they, they're forthcoming about the aging process and you, you're able to drink it along different uh, tiers. You know, you start with a Blanco Repo, Añejo, Extra Añejo, uh, but then even within the age, it's sort of ambiguous because, you know, an extra añejo could be whatever. It could be two years and however many days before it hits three. Or, I, I, you know. it, it sounds like so, there's this there's these there's these blocks of of rigor around what what defines certain kinds of, of tequila. Absolutely. But within those there blocks, there's is. a lot of variety. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And that's why. So I, I agree with everything that Puba said. Just one thing I would add, I, I think. Every form of alcohol goes through a sort of life cycle. And I think what's really exciting is kind of the moment that tequila is in. Because if you think about just truly everything, right? Vodka had its heyday and obviously is still you know popular now. But now there are so many other brands that have popped up that are not just the core brands of vodka that you know, 20, 30 years ago you would have been able to buy in a liquor store. Rum went through the exact same thing. You know, We're talking about whiskey and obviously we love scotch. We, we're all, we've all discussed how, you know, 20 years ago, the number of scotches that you would find in a liquor store, you could count on your hands. Yep. You couldn't yep. get all the stuff that we have now. Yep. And it took conversations and people growing an appreciation for it and folks being able to market those other smaller brands that really proliferated that whole mm -hmm. category. Yeah. And I think for tequila, you know, I'll even use wine as an example, right? Years ago, people thought rosé was the most disgusting thing possible. I mean, <laughs> women that love sweet wine would buy rosé. You could buy like three rosés in a liquor store. You look at now, you have celebrities that have invested and own uh, brands that produce rosé. I think it was Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. They have yep. um, uh, uh, Miraval, right? They're a whole rosé had the huge comeback, the huge comeback. Now there's a dime a dozen. You could buy a zillion different ones. 
And it just takes intentional conversations and creating consumer demand where then you see the proliferation of all these other brands. And I think for tequila, you have the core brands and that has slowly grown over time to now there's so many more things available. And I think as consumers like us get exposed to some of these yeah. smaller brands, you know, I'd venture to say in 10 years, Fortaleza will hopefully be as ubiquitous as Don yeah, Julio. You would hope, yeah. you would yeah. hope That's so. That's amazing. And I think this yeah. is such it's, an important time for tequilas. Yeah, spirit. you would hope yeah. so. Now, there's a drawback to the celebrity tequilas. A lot of the groups that I have cigars with and spirits with, they won't ever gravitate toward a tequila because some of them feel like they're gimmicky and they don't know enough. And I think these conversations that we're having right now tonight, I think shed a lot of light on the quality and the seriousness of what tequila could be and is. Well, but, but people don't know. But this is why the celebrity tequila is great because it's bringing light. A it's bringing light. It's yeah. bringing light to it. Yeah. That's right. my point. Right. It's right. a category yeah. and it's right making there. people Very good say, point. you know, those, you know, so look, if you come to my restaurant, we don't have Casamigos. So what do you normally drink? You know, before the question was, what bourbon do you drink? And then we'll go from there. Now it's, what tequila do you drink? Yeah. And 60% of the time you're going to get Casamigos. Occasionally you'll get the person who's maybe had this experience or something similar, and they'll throw out a Fortaleza, they'll throw out a Siete Leguas, you know, they'll throw out a Don Fulano, they'll throw out a Tapatio or whatever. Um, and then it becomes a little bit easier. But we take that as an opportunity to say, okay, well, you like that, try this. You know, and, and now getting, it, it get, gets people to... Getting back to the whole cigar conversation, you know, when you, you've got a group of people that aren't cigar smokers that don't know cigars. Yeah. You know, they get into the cigars that they're, they're kind of misguided. They don't know what to smoke. You kind of steer them toward the brands and the markers that really make sense for them to start off on so that they become cigar lovers over time. Absolutely. It's the, it's the yeah. same thing. But we, and we've all gone through that journey where you yeah. start with... You know what we call what we. I'm look still at learning. Now. I, I learn from you every yeah, day. Every, at, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I, I, couple, and, and, you know, the interesting thing I want to mention about tequila that I think is different than than whiskey or you know bourbon, scotch, those things. Whiskey, let's call it, is the amount of time. And we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. And not to dive into it again, but it is fascinating to me how long that agave takes to mature to the point that it's ready to be harvested, and is at the point that it can be harvested. That is such an investment of time that really makes this spirit special. And I think that that is something that, you know, versus corn or rye or wheat, you know, it's really it's really yeah. a difference maker. It requires planning. And, and, you know, every decade or so, we experience a shortage. Listen, last summer, I couldn't get Tapatio Excelencia if I paid someone for it because there just wasn't any out there. The minute it came back, it's like, okay, let's get six cases, you know, and maybe two cases came to me. Yeah. But, you know, it, it happens and and it should happen. It's, it's, <laughs> and us. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's thank you. It's natural. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, when it doesn't happen, it's like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? How are you able to make an extra añejo as your first spirit to market? Which you is know, it's, it's so it's, it's so it's so it's so awesome what you guys are doing at añejo because you have such a fantastic selection of tequila and you have such depth in your understanding of it. And you're at the right time and right place where tequila has this this surge, but you're not gimmicky like the like the no. like like the like the we, we like were the a celebrity. Part of creating you the are you're, yeah. you're you're here saying, look at how fascinating this is. Look at how wonderful it is. And the other point I wanted to make is, don't forget that part of this, I think, from a macro perspective, might be related to NAFTA and the free <laughs> oh. trade that we have right now. Like we yep. can. We have the yeah. ability to import, export, you know, some of these fantastic, you know, spirits or, or products across borders. And, you know, it's a, it's a point for, for globalization that we weren't at 20 years ago. Even, you know, we were talking about globalization and Milton Friedman and, you know, um, you know, all the, not Milton Friedman, I'm sorry. We were talking about... Uh, Winston Churchill? <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> that was the Davidoff episode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Drink more tequila. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who's, the, who's the guy that wrote World Is Not Flat? I forget this. That part. was Friedman. Yeah. Friedman. Yep. Milton, though? No. Oh, I don't remember uh, his, his first name. His name is now Milton. No. Anyway. H Howard? I don't no. know. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Anyway, so I don't know. I, I also, Carl. I also I was Carl. Carl. Uh, no. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think we're at a time where we have... You know, we're we're seeing the we're we're reaping the rewards of of, you know, let's we have this fantastic trade partner to the south of us. We all love Mexico 
and we're we're realizing some fantastic gains on that and and now that now everyone's getting so much popular opinion Thomas Friedman. Thomas Friedman. Thank you. There uh, you go. No, Fried- Tom Friedman from the New York Times. <laughs> yeah. Come on. No, and, and to your point, I challenge. No, but seriously. You know, when, when you're booking that vacation to Playa del Carmen or, or Cancun or whatever, instead go to Oaxaca, go to Jalisco, set up distillery tours. There's oh, so many you know, you know brands what, One doing of my it. favorite places in Mexico, Guadalajara. 100%. One of the best places in Mexico is Guadalajara. When you go to Oaxaca, it will blow your mind. Oh, my God. How far is that from Cancun? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. I've never been to Cancun. Close, okay. close to Mexico City, isn't it? Uh, well, it's about three hours. Yeah, it's another three-hour. <laughs> Bam just Mexico wants City. spring break. <laughs> 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 You're fucking right. <laughs> oh God. So I want to just get back. I want to get back yeah. to the cigar for just a moment. I'm down to the final inch. I'm very yes. impressed. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, this the, has been a, a port, wonderful the performance. The Laranga is really very impressive. I've it's made sick. it to the final inch despite the tight drawer, Rooster. So I need that second stick to figure out if this is a... You you got it. <laughs> Pass him around. I like, I like how Bam conveniently <laughs> moved yeah, to another yeah. time. <laughs> nice segue, Bam. It's called smooth segue. This um this cigar has been a really nice performer for sure. and And for a petite Corona and the price, I mean... It really delivers great can't, flavor. Can't wait for the rating. Great flavor. Yep. I guess you're saying that, is that the second one or the first one? This is the first one. I, I, <laughs> okay, I did that. a little so perfect you, draw on it. I'm nice. Good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Awesome. So. I just, the thing that impresses me about this cigar, it, it's enjoyable all the way through. I think clearly everybody's enjoying this smoke. I'm just amazed at how much flavor this puts out in the second half that I think we've said this about just a few cigars we've had where even after dinner, if I could just have a quick smoke, this would satisfy me as much as a cigar double the size of this, Absolutely. which says a lot yeah. about this. Yeah. It, does. it does. And I will say, too, it, it, it burned very slowly for me. I mean, we're, you know, yeah, we're, we're totally. a little over an hour in. I mean, it's, it's, it's it, it, for, the, for sh- the size. For the shape, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a great yeah. value smoke. Yeah. It delivered True. the whole way, and it burned slowly. It wasn't a 40-minute or so. Right. Really, really nice. So, all right, boys, you guys ready to do the uh, formal lizard rating on this yeah. thing? Yes, sir. All righty. Rooster, you're up. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a nine. All righty, Puba. Um, it's definitely not a nine for me. Um, I really, really enjoyed the cigar. Um, it was a little bit of a two act play um, for me. I, I, you know, it started out a little bit more on the mild side, and then it built in strength, and it it had great body, it had great combustion. So for me, I'm gonna give the cigar. Uh, an eight. I'm in the same place as you. I think for what it is, absolutely perform well. It didn't knock my socks off. I don't know where I'd slot it in a regular rotation. I'm an eight all day. So, I'm, sorry. If you're not slotting it in the regular rotation and you're giving it such a high, that's a pretty high score. That's an elite score. It is because it's a great cigar. When would you smoke this? I would smoke this probably at the beginning of my day. If I only have 40 an hour, you know, somewhere in there. But is it a once a week cigar? This is probably a once a month cigar for me. So uh, I've, I've got to ask. Uh, we'll finish our ratings, but I'm curious. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we'll dive into it. Yeah. Senator. I, I think for me, I'm, I'm also at an eight. And not that there was any glaring deficiency in this cigar whatsoever. I think it starts medium. I think it ends medium full. Um. I think the thing, uh, kind of to Gizmo's point of where I would slot this in, I I, I wrestle with it in the sense that I, I just got finished saying how this cigar puts out enough flavor to even satisfy me after a meal. Um, but after a meal, I'm not going to pick up a Petit Corona. Exactly. Right? I'm going to pick up something bigger than this. Yep. So the places where I would pick up a smaller cigar for me, again, this is just my personal preference, are, it's usually going to be a cigar that I'm going to have. Maybe I have a quick window in the afternoon or a quick window here and there, and I'm not going to necessarily be looking for a flavor bomb at that point. So it's a virtue just how much flavor this little cigar puts in, but I do struggle with where I would slot in something with this much flavor at this small of a size in this format. So that that's kind of where I'm at. All right. Ricky, you're up. Yeah, I'd say I'd, I'd give this an eight. And um, had it been a little larger, I might give it a nine. But for me, this is probably the cigar I would slot in on a car ride. If it was driving larger? Driving into the city. Mm, sorry. Yep. Yeah, if there was just more of it. 
Um, but if it was larger, it may not taste the same. Of course. So assuming that the flavor is the same and it was larger, I'd give it a nine. Uh, right now it's an eight. And for me, I'd slot this in on a car ride to work, 45 minutes or a car ride back home, you know, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever, depending on traffic. Perfect stick. Um, you know, it's a great price point. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah you know, considering for, the price point to I, get this kind of flavor out of, out of this price point of a stick. I mean, you're talking like maybe eight, eight dollars for a stick. Yeah. So it, it's the a good one point. from two it's weeks good, ago good was that that was a that was about four to fourteen. Yeah, so this blows that away. Mm, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Sure. In Grinder, you're up. Um, I mean, without any predilection of when I, you know where I'm going to fucking slot the cigar, I think it's a fantastic cigar. Um, and um, f- I love I love the size. This is one of my favorite sizes of cigars, and. I found it to be a tremendous amount of flavor. The burn was fantastic, and it was long. It's to to your point earlier. It's it, it took a while to smoke it, and it might be small, but it is mighty. And um, I mean, how long did we take us to smoke the cigar? It took, a little over an hour. A little yeah. over an hour. Yeah. So yeah. it's awesome. you know, it's yeah. not like a, it's not like a. I mean, I've smoked, I've smoked uh, uh, toros in an hour, and you know, uh, for me, this is this is a nine. It's 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 definitely a nine, and um, it's it's something that I would consider uh, going to the uh, to the rooster the <laughs> rooster uh, retail shop to to consume. <laughs> It'll be open in about ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty dollars a stick. I'll yep. be I'll be first online. <laughs> bam bam. Yeah, yeah, I'm at a nine with okay. this cigar. I, I think everything you've that all of you have said are, are very accurate. But the the flavor and the punch that you get from this and the shape, it's it's a home run. I mean, think about it. We smoked a pyramid on the last pod, and we smoked it in about an hour. This was a petite Corona, and we, it still took an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it was fantastic. Yeah. This is something yeah, I would so. slot in at least weekly for me. This, yeah, this absolutely. Stick, no doubt about it. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, it's very good. It For me, it lacked some of the, like... It just lacked a little bit of complexity and it lacked a little, just a little, when I say a little bit, I'm talking, it's marginal, a little bit of complexity and it lacked a little bit of that kind of like balance of dessert flavor with spice, like that play that makes it complex, that makes it just a little bit more complex. So it, 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 it's really good. It's, I mean, it's a really good petite Corona. This, this, yeah, it don't, is. Yeah. Don't, 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 I, I don't want to, um, mislead anybody or, or i'm trying to be accurate but it just didn't have that kind of like sweet really sweet and salty or like it this the, the balance the complexity wasn't there for me um but the performance of it uh, was great it smoked great and i enjoyed it i just for that's why it didn't like really push it no, over I, the edge absolutely by the way the uh, composite lizard score boys was an 8.4. That's very, very good. And I think that's a great score. Great that's score. a, that's very a very... Good. It's got good aging potential. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. recommend. Yeah. yeah. Now, my point about this is, is, is certainly if I were to purchase this outside of the Rooster retail store, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if I'd buy a 50 cab of this, oh, which I, is probably... I would, I would buy a 50 definitely. cab tomorrow morning. Okay. At this price it's point, so absolutely. Good. Yeah, I would. It's, it's so I just don't it. know yeah. if I would. Would oh. you, Senator? Yeah. No, I guess I'm with you in the sense that I, I, I this is complicated <laughs> because I should buy a 50 cab because I would smoke this again. Yeah. And I have no doubt that a 50 cab is going to smoke better than a dress box because the first one of Rooster course. gave me a while back was that of a dress box. I actually didn't love it. And this, I think, is a really, really good cigar, a great cigar. Um, but I think why you're struggling with that the same way I am is, you know, I buy a 50 cab of things that I know I'm going to smoke a lot of. And I, I'm, I'm not convinced that I'll smoke this very often to warrant a 50 cab, even though that makes the most sense of, of anything I should Right, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, it's like where you jump on a 50 cab into the part of your shorts. Like, exactly. Or like, rass. Like white, rass. Yeah, like white on rice or rat. You know, yeah. you're like, oh, part of your shorts. I'm going to buy that. Done. Because yeah. it kind of delivers something that's really... You, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would buy this over part of his shorts. Oof. I would disagree with that. Fifty. Yeah, and, and the uh, thing about part of his shorts, I don't know, guys. Those, those, those outpunch their weight class uh, uh, all let, day. Let me just say this before before we get into debate about this, and we absolutely should. I'm not surprised hearing this, right? Like, if I were to curate a cigar, a, a little cigar for Rooster, 
and the choice were this or a part of good short, I know this is what his palate would like more. The same way that if I did this for Puba, I know he'd appreciate a short more. And I think that's what's great about this. Like we all bring different palettes to this. So I'm in the short camp. I think it's no secret at this point that Partagas is right in my sweet spot. But I, I am not at all surprised for Rooster's palate. Yeah. If I had a 50 cab of this and a, and a 50 cab of shorts and he was looking for a last smoke of the night, I'd pull out yeah, this cigar for, for him. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we gave it an elite score. That's it an is. elite it's a, rating. It's a very yeah. strong recommend. Absolutely. Sure. Hey, no doubt. Absolutely. You know what else is really good in this size is the Ramona Jonas Club Oh, club dude. Cor- yeah, the, oh, yeah, the the uh, the club small cor- club Corona. Boys, yeah, Puba Fantastic turned me on to that thing. cigar. I would chase that cigar all day, every day, every week. We got to do it. Fantastic. Fantastic. We oh, got to do a, that on a wonderful pod. smoke. Oh, they're hard to find right now. Yeah, no, they're actually really? easy to find right now. They're on I Havana's. They've sat for three weeks straight. No one's buying them. What? Wow. Go there right now. Yeah, really? I need you Blab to buy it. those. I had one that I <laughs> liked and buy I wasn't crazy about, so I haven't bought it. <laughs> Why did you buy them? I need you to buy those. <laughs> I need you to buy those. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, you boys, know another great pod. And Ricky, uh, just want to thank you for coming for a second week with us. Ricky is the uh, chef and partner in Anejo. Añejo? I can't say it. That was Añejo. perfect. That was, that was it. That was it. That in, was it. Uh, in both New York and Philadelphia. So check out the restaurants. Did we, did we come up with the Ricky's lizard name? Not yet. Puba. Uh-oh. You're putting the pressure put on Puba. What's, 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 uh, what's, the, name, what's the name What's the name of the, the agave after it's chopped up and it's a little ball? Pina. Pina. That's your name. <laughs> no, I don't know. I think he's the technician. Technician. I like technician. I like that. I like technician. A little long, though. Yeah, yeah. Right, let it marinate. Well, Puba. listen, when we have Ricky on again, we'll uh, we'll see if, if Puba's come up with the uh, organic nickname <laughs> for him. But uh, an 8.4, boys, for the poor Laranaga Petit Corona. Great cigar. Great tequilas. Thank you again, Ricky. Thank you, Appreciate Ricky. Appreciate having Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you so much, Ricky. Thank, Thank you, Ricky. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you boys next week. Keep smoking. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave us a rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. If you have any comments, questions, if you want to reach out, say hello, tell us what you're smoking, email us, loungelizardspod, P-O-D, that's loungelizardspod at gmail.com. You can also find us on Instagram, at loungelizardspod. We really appreciate your time, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>